de eh, flexos digitales superficiales que es raised to four tenos which are deep, deep to the flexor pretty masculum throughout the carpal tunnel to the digits, digits. the four tenons for the digits are enclosed along with the four tendons of the deep flexor of the digits Uh, which is now the profundus deep. In a common flexor synovial sheet, the LPS flexes the middle phalanges of the near four digits, which are fingers, at the proximal interphalangeal joint. In continuation, the flexor digital superficial is also flexes the proximal phalanges at the metacarpophalangeal joint and the wrist joint. So, the flexus digital in profundo, the six FDP, the flexor digital in profundo, is the only muscle that can flex the distal interphalangeal joint of the digits. This deep flexor of the digits has an extensive proximal attachment to the ulna and interosseous membrane enclose the anterior aspect of the ulna. The, uh, the flexor digitorum profundo places the distal phalanges of the medial four digits after the, uh, the, the flexor digitorum superficialis has placed the middle phalanges. Of course, the fingers and axis with flexion of the head making excess. Each tendon is capable of flexing two interphalangeal joints. Uh, the meta metacarpophalangeal joint and the wrist joint. The flexor digital profundo divides into four parts that end in four tendons which start posterior to the tendon of the uh, flexor digital superficialis and the flexor retinaculum, the part of the muscle going to the second digit usually separates from the rest of the muscle relatively early in the recent part of the forearm. Each tendon enters the various sheath of its digit posterior to the tendon of the uh, flexor digital superficialis, the latter part of the muscle serving digits two and three is innervated by the medial nerve and the medial or ulnar part of the muscle serving digits 4 and 5 is innervated by the ulnar nerve. Right. The flexor pollicis longus. This long flexor of the thumb lies lateral to the flexor digital in profundo where it flows the anterior aspect of the radio distal to the attachment of the supinator. Its flat tendon passes it to the flexor retinaculum enveloped in its own synovial sheet on the lateral side of the common flexor synovial sheet. The flexor policy is longer flexes the distal balance of the Uh, the first digit, the thumb, and second, the proximal phalanx, and the first metacarpal bone. The flexor pollicis longus is the only muscle that flexes the interphalangeal joint of the thumb. It also flexes the metacarpophalangeal and carpometacarpal joint of the thumb and by assist inflation of the wrist joint. Right. The pronatal quadratus. As its name states, this small muscle is quadrangular and pronates the forearm. It cannot be palpated or observed except in dissection because it is the deepest muscle in the anterior aspect of the forearm. It closes the distal fold of the radius and ulna and the interosseous membrane between them. The pronatal quadratus is the only muscle that attaches only to the ulna at one end and only to the radius at the other end. The pronatal quadratus pronates the forearm at the radial ulna joint and also at the intermediate radial ulna.
synthesis motive it is the prime mover in promotion. The front level for drug is initiates promotion. It is assisted by the front level cell where more speed and power are needed. The front level quadratus also has the interosic membrane, all the radius and all the ulna together, particularly when upward thrusts are transmitted throughout the wrist. Uh, during a fall on the hand, the extensor muscles or the forearm, the extensor muscles are in the posterior extensor supinator compartment of the forearm and all are innervated by the radial nerve. These muscles can be organized into three functional groups. The muscles that extend and abduct and adopt the hand at the wrist joint. Extensor cartilarialis lumbus, extensor cartilarialis brevis, and extensor cartilarialis ordinaris. The muscles that extend the medial core tissues, which are the extensor digitorum, extensor indicis, and extensor digit minimi. Muscles that extend and absorb the first digit or thumb, abductor pollicis lumbus, right? Uh, the extensor pollicis brevis and extensor policy lungs. The extensor tendons are held in place in the wrist region by the extensor retinaxidum which prevents both stringing, right? Of the tendon when the hand is hyperextended at the wrist joint and as the tendons pass over the toes from at the wrist, they are provided with a novial tendon sheet that reduce friction between the extensor tendons and bone. The extensor uh, muscles of the forearm are also be divided into superficial and deep groups. Follow the superficial extensor, which are the extensor cartilary, the extensor cartilary, the extensor DGT mini, and the extensor cartilary are attached by a common extensor tendon to the lateral epicondyle. The personal attachment of the other two muscles in the superficial group, the brachioradialis and the extensor cartilary longus into the lateral supercondylar ridge of the humerus and adjacent lateral in a muscular section. The four flat tendons of the central tissue impact lead to the extensor epinaculum to the medial core tissue. The common tendons of the index and middle fingers are drawn on the medial side. They are the knuckles by the respective tendons of the extensor in which is an extensor GC movement, which are the extensors of the index and middle fingers are circulated. The extensors in this in the six tendons and her head have in the same total as the extension of the extensor digital. The tendon of the extensor digital minimum has its own tunnel. Usually three oblique bands uh, unite the four tendons of the extensor digital proximal to the doctor's restricting independent action of the tendons, especially the ring tendon. Consider the normally not digit can remain fully fixed at the other ones are fully extended. On the distal end of the metacarpal and along the phalanges, the extensor tendon flattens to form extensor expansion. Each extensor digital expansion, which is the dorsal expansion, the dorsal root, is a triangular tendinous polyrosis that wrap around the dorsal end side of, uh, of a head of the metacarpal and proximal phalanx. The visual like food formed by the extensor expansion over the head of the metacarpal holding the extensor tendon in the middle of the vision is attached on one side to the palmar ligament. The extensor expansion divides into a media band that passes to the base of the middle phalanx and the two lateral bands that pass to the base of the distal phalanx the interosseous and, and lumbrical. Muscles of the head attached to the lateral band of the extensor expansion. The retinacular ligament is a delicate fibrous band that runs from the proximal phalanx and fibrous shift obliquely across the middle phalanx and two interphalangeal zones. It joins the extensor expansion to the distal phalanx on flexing the distal interphalangeal joint, the retinacular ligament becomes 
reconciled and put the proxima joint into flexion. Similarly, on extending the proxima joint, the distal joint is pulled by the uh, retinacular ligament into nearly complete extension. The brachioradialis, this cruciform uh, muscle lies superficially on the anterolateral surface of the forearm and forms the lateral border of the cruciform cortex. As mentioned uh, previously, the brachioradialis is the general among muscles of the posterior, which are extensors to primeros compartments, and that is flexed the forearm at the elbow. Especially when quick movement is required and when a weight is lift, lifted during the slow flexion of the forearm. The brachioradialis and the supinator are the only muscles of the compartment that do not close and therefore are incapable of acting at the wrist. As it descends, the brachioradialis overlies the radial nerve and are in where they lie together on the supinator pronator, pronator tendon. The FTS and flexor pollicis longus, the distal part of the tendon is covered by the ACL and abductor pollicis brevis as they pass to the top to test the brachioradialis, the elbow joint is placed against the system with the forearm in the mid front position. If fasting normally, the muscle can be seen and palpated. The extensor brachioradialis longus, the cuticle muscle is partially overlapped by the brachioradialis, which is often planned. It passes distally posterior to the brachioradialis. Its tendon is crossed by the ACL and APD. Right. And the sense of capillaries don't lose extent and uh, adopts the wrist. It is in this is need when clenching the fist. Right. The extensive of capillaries radius. Uh, as its name indicates, the fusiform muscle is shorter than the extensive of capillaries longus. In fact, it is that it is covered by the extensive of capillaries longus. The extensor carpiradialis brevis extends and adopts the head at the wrist joint. Uh, this muscle, muscle and the extensor carpiradialis longus act together to steady the wrist during flexion of the medial fold The extensor digitorum, the extensor digitorum, the principal extensor of the radial fold digit occupies much of the posterior surface of the forearm. A four tendon proxima pass through a common synovial sheet deep to the extensor retinaculum to the tendon of the extensor indices. On the dorsum of the hand, the tendons spread out as they run toward the fingers. Adjacent tendons are linked by intertendinous connections. Commonly, the four tendon is used initially with the tendon to the ring finger and which is set. Little finger by a tendon of span. The extensor chitorum extends the proximal phalanges and, without its collateral reinforcement, the middle and distal phalanges as well. It also helps extend the hand at the wrist joint after restricting its traction primarily on the digit. To test the extensor chitorum form is pronated and the fingers are extended. The extensor digit minimi. This cutiform slip of muscle is a partially detached part of the extensor digitorum. The tendon of this extensor of a little finger runs throughout a separate compartment into the extensor retinaculum and then divides in two slips. The lateral one is shown to the tendon of the extensor digitorum. The extensor digitorum minimi extends the proximal phalanx of the three digitis at the metacarpal phalangeal joint and assists with extension of, uh, of its interphalangeal joints. It also assists with extension of the head after accepting its traction, primary on the PPG. Extensor capi ulnaris. This long physical muscle located on the middle border of the forearm and two heads distally extended grows in a groove between the ulnar head 
and this fellow also sleeping as the first of farming at the expense of the philosophical day. Extends of carpi, pulnari, extends and adopts the, the hand at the wrist, joined simultaneously when acting independently. Acting with the extensive of carpi radialis, it extends the hand. Acting with the flex of carpi ulnaris, it adducts the hand like the extensive of carpi radialis longus. It is needed when clenching the wrist. To test the extent of capillary, the bones are exponated and the fingers are extended. The supinator, this muscle lies deep in the cubital fossa and long with the brachialis form its flow. The humeral and ulnar heads of attachment of the supinator envelop the neck and proximal part of the body of the radius. The deep branch of the radial nerve passes between the two parts of the muscle and release the cubital fossa to enter the posterior part of the arm as it exceeds the muscle and joins the posterior interosseous artery and might be referred to as the posterior interosseous The supinator, the primary mover in supination, supinates the forearm by rotating the radius. The biceps brachii also supinates the forearm especially during rapid and forceful supination, and when resistance is required and the forearm is flexed. Take a look uh, in your outline. The relation of the radial nerve to the brachialis and supinator muscle. The deep extensor of the forearm has on the thumb and the extensor indices helps extend the index finger. The three muscles acting on the thumb are deep to the superficial extension and grow out from the thorough and the latter part of the forearm that divides the extensor. Because of these characteristics, they are referred to as outcropping thumb muscles. The adductor policy longus, the long physical belly of the adductor of the thumb lies just the top of the supinator and is closely related to the EPD. It's tender and sometimes it's very, it's commonly split into parts, one in which might attach to the trapezius instead of the usual side of the base of the exposed corpus. The APL adopts and extends the thumb at the carpal nerve, the carpal joint. It has with the abductor policies ready during abduction of the thumb, and with extensive policies during extension of the stitches. Although deeply situated, the APL emerges at the wrist as one of the outcropping muscles. The extension passes deep to the extensive retinaculum in a common synovial sheet with the tendon of the ETV. To test the APO, the thumb is abducted against the system, at the end of the calcium test. The extensive policy predicts the belly of this tissue from short extensor of the thumb lies distant to the long abductor of the thumb and is partially covered by it. Its tendon lies parallel and nearly median to that of the adductor policy. Longus could extend further, reaching the base of the proximal phalanx. The EPB extends the proximal phalanx of the thumb at the metacarpophalangia joint and helps extend the retail phalanx. In continued action, it helps extend the first metacarpal. It also helps extend the adopt the hands to test the TV. The thumb is extended against resistance at the metacarpophalangeal joint. The extensor policy longus. This long extensor of the thumb is large and its tendon is longer than the EPD. EPD, the extensor policy breaks. The tendon passes near to the dorsal to the heel of the radius, using it as a tropia, which is fully shown.
extension its line of road as it proceeds to the base of the fetal phalanx of the thumb. The gap thus created between the long extensor tendons of the thumb is the anatomical snuff box, the EPL, the extensor policy long box. Extend the distal phalanx of the thumb and in continuum the action, extend the metacarpophalangeal and interphalangeal joints of the thumb. It also adopts the extended thumb and rotates it laterally to test the EPL. The thumb is extended against resistance at the interphalangeal joint. It has been normally the tendon of the muscle can be seen and palpated on the left side of the anatomical snuff box. The tendon of the APL and EPB bounds the anatomical snuff box accurately and the tendon of the EPI bounds it posteriorly. The snuff box is visible when the thumb is fully extended, which draws the tendon up and produces a concavity between them. Observe, observe that. The radial artery lies in the floor of the snuff box. The radial thalloid process can be palpated proximally at the base of the first metacarpal can be palpated distal in the snuff box. The scaphoid, scaphoid and trapezius can be felt in the floor of the snuff box between the radial thalloid process and the first metacarpal. Let us uh, just uh, stop right here and continue in a little later.